The X-H2S autofocus for photos. Is it worth the upgrade over the X-T3 and X-T4? Everyone is talking about video, but what about the photo autofocus? I guess I'll just have to test it out for myself. The Fujifilm X-H2S is dubbed as the new flagship camera, and while it has been heavily marketed for filmmaking due to its amazing video capabilities, let's not forget that the S stands for speed, especially when it comes to still photography. Fujifilm introduced a new stack sensor for this model, which theoretically should give us faster sensor readout and improve autofocus speed. This is going to be beneficial for those who need accurate autofocus in low light environments and fast paced action. In this in this video, I'm going to compare the autofocus performance between my tried and true Fujifilm X-E3 and the new X-H2S, so you can decide for yourself if the autofocus improvement is enough to warrant the upgrade from your current Fujifilm camera. For this test, I wanted to level the playing field as much as possible. So both cameras will be using the same lens. They will be set to the same dry mode of five frames per second, and they'll also be using the same focus mode. And ultimately, I'm gonna want to shoot these in JPEG so that the memory readouts are pretty much the same. Because I recorded to my EVF, you'll actually be able to see exactly what I see in my camera, and I'll show you the resulting photos after the fact. But be sure to stick around to the end of this video for my final conclusions and thoughts on this camera and the upgrade. I'm going to be covering three different scenarios. The first is an outdoor situation with my dog running toward the camera using the 33 millimeter 1.4. The second is an outdoor situation as well with my kids biking towards the camera also using the 33 millimeter 1.4. And the third and final situation is an indoor situation with low light with my partner walking towards the camera using the 50 millimeter f 1.0. So without further delay, let's get into the first test. The X-H2S is starting off strong with a 102% improvement in autofocus performance over the X-T3 when it comes to photographing dogs. I know this is a kind of a niche situation, but the new subject detection for animals really makes a big difference here. And when just snapping photos of my dog, the autofocus just feels more confident so I can focus on composition and kind of like seeing those moments rather than moving the focus point around. Honestly, I know sports is pretty challenging on the autofocus, but I think little kids running or biking towards a camera is really the Achilles heel of the Fujifilm camera system. And I think a 32% improvement in autofocus performance for this type of situation is really a big step forward with the X-H2S and kind of the autofocus algorithms moving forward. And outside of this data, the stickiness of the face and eye detect inside the EVF just feels a little bit more solid when in comparison to the Fujifilm X-T3. 
or the X-T4. This gives me a lot of confidence going into weddings, low light events, and documenting my kids in really kind of like these unpredictable scenarios. The 50mm f1.0 in low light really gives these two cameras a challenge. And similar to the previous test, there is a 34% improvement in autofocus performance in this low light situation with one of Fujifilm's kind of like tougher lenses to autofocus on because it's got all the glass elements and it has to really be pushed around and it's quite a heavy lens at the 1.0. What you'll also notice is that the reduced viewfinder blackout is really apparent in these low light situations so it really helps you to see what's going on and also to confirm that you were getting autofocus and I think the stack sensor is really shining in this test. The real question is, are these autofocus improvements worth the upgrade? Are they worth an $800 premium over the Fujifilm X-T4 or even a $1,400 premium over the Fujifilm X-T3 considering that those two cameras have similar autofocus systems? This really comes down to your financial situation and how important it is for you to get the shot. For professional wedding photographers, for sports photographers, for people shooting at motorsports, that 20% better chance of nailing the shot could make or break you getting that kind of like quote unquote money shot, wowing your clients and getting that shot that's gonna propel your career. And heck, if, if you're really looking for a solid camera for documenting your family and you don't wanna worry if the autofocus is going to catch the moment, you just wanna be able to trust it. For me, family photos are priceless. So getting an amazing photo of my kids is actually to me worth more money or more kind of value than any type of award-winning client shot I could ever get. So for me, this autofocus improvement is really worth every single dollar in the income increase in price. On the flip side, if the autofocus has been fine for you with an X-T3 or the X-T4 or any of those later gen cameras and you don't really find yourself missing those important shots or perhaps you have a controlled shoot environment for portraits or products, I don't really think this increase in autofocus speed is necessary and while I haven't done any formal tests on the image quality itself, I don't think you're going to get an amazingly increase in image quality considering that the resolution is still exactly the same as the previous previous gen, if you are a hobbyist or you're documenting your family and you would rather spend that money on experiences or on trips or just paying for bills and essentials, then by all means, the previous generation cameras are still very great tools. At the end of the day, it all comes down to each photographer's individual preference. And for me, I'm gonna be selling my X-T3 after using this camera for a week. I'm confident in the autofocus improvements for finishing off my wedding photography season this year and also just moving forward for documenting my family and pretty much anything else that I throw at it. And with that, my name is Rodrigo Ballesteros. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, please subscribe for more Fujifilm or photography content. As you wait for the next video, be sure to check me out on Instagram as I'm posting new tips, tricks, 
tricks and tutorials every single day. And for those who made it to the end of this video, I'm curious, what do you want to see next about this camera? Do you want to see a full settings guide on how I set up my Fujifilm X-H2S? Or do you want to hear my discussion on the top five reasons to upgrade to this camera, as well as my top five reasons to not upgrade to this camera? Let me know down in the comments. Oh, 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 oh,